Today's demo is um, a flowering wisteria tree. Okay, and I'm going to share with you a different way to stroke the tree, trunks and branches, and then how we create the, um, the look of the greens underneath and then the flowing uh, wisteria coming up and over the, the areas of the tree so we get light and dark. And part of that is going to be sharing with you how to use our mop brushes for that purpose. Okay, so let's get overhead and we will get started here real quick. Let's, there we go. Okay, so this is the tree we're doing. Okay, and I want you to see the light touch of the mop brush here. Okay, so we're going to be loading this color on the mop brush at the end with the white and the purple. And we'll be tapping it on there. All right. So similar to how you would do with a filbert brush. And I've shared with you how to do foliage with a filbert brush. And I'm going to show you how to do some more tonight. And then we come in with um, the mop brush at the end and add all that pretty purple hanging down. Okay. So let's get started. I'm going to pop that someplace where I can see it. And so if you don't know what I'm talking about with these mop brushes, this is what I'm talking about. We, they come in two sizes. There's a half inch and a three quarter. I'm going to be using the half inch today. All right. And, but they're both wonderful brushes for backgrounds and, and all sorts of things. And I found with these, because they are a bit of a stiffer bristle that they worked really well for foliage. Okay. So I want you to see that, see how this is curved. It's very similar to the shape of a filbert brush. See that? So when I show you how to do leaves with the filbert, we're going to use the same sort of concept with this mop brush as well. Okay. If you don't have a filbert, it's okay. You can use a, a flat brush. So this is a 10 filbert and this is a 10 flat and either one is fine. You're just going to um, get a little bit different looking foliage underneath. Okay. All right. So let's get going. I'm going to put out my colors. Let me just shift that over a little bit. There we go. Okay. Just making sure I didn't have any questions. Okay. I'm going to put out my colors. So I'm using some perfect purple. You can use any shade of, of purple in the multi-surface plaid folk art one stroke, or excuse me, plaid folk art multi-surface paint that you would like. I'm using perfect purple in this instance. I've got wicker white. And for green, I'm using Thicket for my dark green. And then to tone that to um, a lighter color, we're going to use some yellow ochre. Okay. For my tree trunk, I'm using some asphaltum. Or you could use burnt umber or bark brown. The asphaltum has a little bit of a red tone to it. And then some licorice to add some darker areas. Okay. All right. So that's all my colors. I'm just going to go through those real quick. Again, we've got yellow ochre, thicket, perfect purple, wicker white, asphaltum, and licorice. And then I'm going to put out some medium, floating medium. We're going to need about that much should do. That might be just a little bit too much. Okay. And then we're going to flatten these out so we can get at the edges. Okay. All right. So first of all, a wisteria tree. Yes, there is such a thing. Um, I think they're graft together, grafted together, excuse me. Um, but they are real. I've seen them in gardens and different areas. Okay. So the filbert I'm going to use to do my trunk and the trunk of the wisteria tree is usually more gnarly. Um, and just like the, the vines would be too. So I'm going to go ahead and load my filbert brush with plenty of asphaltum and I'm going to dip into medium and work that in. Okay. Then I'm going to come creep over here next to my licorice and just get a tiny bit. I didn't need to put out nearly that much licorice, but we'll work with it. All right. So asphaltum and then side loading some licorice. 
and making sure that I have plenty of medium. All right, so the chisel edge of this brush comes to a fine point or tip here at the very end. And so, um, <laughs> Julie, and so what we're going to do is use that chisel edge to um, get the shape. And I'm going to bring my camera over just to the side a little bit so my hand doesn't get blocked. Okay, so we're going to come up here and we're going to immediately take a left turn and come over here. All right, and just get that um, trunk kind of gnarly looking. And then the other side is going to come straight up this way and then branch off. We'll have a branch coming this way and then we'll come up. Now this is a, a low growing rounded habit for a tree. Okay. So we don't need to do a whole lot in terms of the initial trunks and branches, but we will come in and add more once we get the shape of our tree in place. So let me just work on this. We want some low hanging branches. And you're going to get a nice branch tip with the chisel edge of this brush. That's what I was trying to explain earlier and I kind of squirreled on you, didn't I? All right, so mostly asphaltum, that little bit of licorice, and we're going to come up here. And then we want to create about three layers. So this would be the lowest layer here. And then we're going to come up here and then we'd have the upper layer up here. Okay, so right in here, and we want it to come out quite a ways. So you see how it kind of um, umbrellas out over the ground. And then we need to create a top, kind of a peak where the highest point will be. And it doesn't really matter how perfect and good you are with these branches underneath all this foliage. It's really mostly for placement for you to know where you're going to put your foliage and your flowers. Okay. And then we'll come and sneak some more branches in there later. All right. So let's come down here a little bit. Okay, so let's address the other side of this tree, which is this branch that's coming way out here. And then we're going to kind of bump it down. We want to even give it like a little bit of an elbow right there. looks like it's giving you a thumbs up. <clears throat> and then from there, we're going to come up. Need a little more medium. I'm on paper. It's just art paper and it's a smooth press, but you kind of need medium to help the paint move nicely. Okay. These demos that I do now, um, we've been putting up on my YouTube channel. So if you um, want to go back and it's difficult on, on the Facebook lives to go find older um, videos and topics and you can't really search on them that well, but on my YouTube channel, you can. And so we've been putting up some of those things, uh, mostly holiday was up and then we'll start putting up some more of the general type paintings. Okay. All right. So coming off of this branch, I'm going to come out here now. There we go. And we're looking pretty good. And if you <laughs> I was telling you about my, my YouTube channel, um, it's under Michelle, my designs. Okay. 
you can go search YouTube. And there should be a link right here on my Facebook group too, page. Okay, so that's pretty good for the underlying structure of our tree. We're going to have um, more branches, but we don't want to spend much time putting those in until we understand where all of our foliage and flowers are going to go. Okay, so I'm just getting a little better look at. So if you can see, I've got light and dark with that um, asphaltum with the side load of burnt umber, and you can come in. We'll come in later with a little more, uh, not burnt umber, licorice. We'll come in with a little more licorice later and add some darker spots. But for now, that's a pretty good start. Okay. So cleaning this brush now, I'm still working with the number 10 filbert. I'm going to come and get just asphaltum and then come over here and work that into some thicket. So asphaltum and thicket. And then a touch of yellow ochre. Okay, and we want lots of medium with these different colors. We're going to just start adding foliage roughly in the background, all right, because you're not going to see much of this. And I want you to see I'm just kind of tapping this in and swiping down. Okay, so we're going to come through and we're going to add some here. And you'll notice with that medium, it kind of lets some of the branches show. And I want to leave some open spaces. So I'm going to sweep in there, pick up more of the asphaltum, darken here in the middle. All right, leave some of this open, sweep down. And then I'm going to skip up here and again over to this branch. This is all going to be underpainting and the purple is going to go on top of it. So you're kind of slip slapping this on over the branches. Combinations of thicket yellow ochre, some asphaltum. All right, now what's going to show the most is underneath the branches. So I want you to see when I come in here and I tap the edge, let me come down just a little bit closer. When I tap just the tip of the, my brush down, I'm going to get pretty little foliage look like leaves hanging down right there. See that? So you just tap a few of those. You don't have to do the whole tree that way, just some places out here on the edge. And you're just tapping against that very tip of the uh, filbert brush with light pressure. Okay, so just do a few of these out here. You can grab a little more color and then over here you're going to angle it. Let's put a little bit more in here. First, sweep that down and then we're going to tap. All right. So let them come down right off the edge there. And then back in here under that branch, little light taps. They're going to be in the background. Okay. You just come out here to some of the branch edges on the sides and add those little soft taps. And the rest of this is going to be underneath our painting. Okay. All right. So that gets a lot of our green in place. And you'll notice I left open areas. We've got it pretty dark right here in the center. Coming through, you come through this way and through this way. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to start adding our purple. Not getting to that mop just yet. Okay, so clean that brush out, and then I'm going to come in here with just the perfect purple on this filbert. You need that darker color to see the light shades we're going to add later. Okay, so let's look at this kind of in a, a methodical approach here. We want to have sections of this purple, and it sits above the 
green areas, okay? So I'm going to start kind of up here where it's fairly dry because I don't want this really turn in my purple colors. All right, but I want to bring in this purple through here and out to the edge. I'm not going over that pretty foliage I put in there. And then I'm going to come through here along the top. So you need plenty of this dark purple on top of the green. You notice I'm leaving some area underneath it with the green. And you want to do this kind of quickly so that it stays wet when you come back in with the lighter color. Now I'm going to drop down right through here. And then come in here. Now I don't want to, I want to leave that white space there. So I'm just going to come right over my green. And we're going to continue to add heavy purple in here. Leave some of the green showing through and some of the light in the background showing through. Okay. And then we're going to drop. So remember I said there's sections like one, two, and then three. So now we're going to come drop down here, bring that over, connect the two, leave some branches showing and leave some light showing. Okay. And then we're going to come back up through the middle, leaving some green. And then we're going to come down over into this area here. So we're leaving the green at the bottom, adding the dark purple like that. Okay. So we've got lots of light and dark areas. And as you can see, you're getting that umbrella shape, right? So I'm just going to kind of wipe off my brush here. Get the rest of that purple out and knock down some of those heavy areas. Okay. All right. So this is still wet. I'm going to now come and get my mop. All right. So this is the half inch mop. Okay. I'm going to get some, just a little bit of medium on this mop, not water. I'm using medium, floating medium. So I'm just loading it with that medium right there. All right, you load it just like a flat brush. And every time, if you see how I press it down, you're going to see that filbert shape. See how it's rounded? All right, so now I'm going to come and get the purple. This is perfect purple. And then I'm going to get a touch of white and work that in. Okay, not a lot of paint on this brush just a nice thin load and see how that's created a chisel edge for me. I want to kind of tap this out so I can come back to um, kind of like a scruffy looking end. So I want to push down on it and see how that wakes that up or opens that up right there. All right. So then we're going to come in here and we're going to tap. I always start at the top and what you want to do is start at the bottom. Forget that. Come down here. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I have that bad habit. Okay, let's come through here. And so you're lightly tapping. Now I want to bring the camera down just a little bit closer so you can see that movement. So lightly tapping and push it on your plate to kind of spread it apart. There we go. And see how it, and if you angle it to the left on the left side, to the right on the right side. So I'm going to pick up just a little more white in this brush load. There we go. And now I'm going to tap it on the corner with it angled to the center or to the chisel edge. See that? So it's straight this way. And I'm going to come right over. Let me get a little more of that with the white. There we go. The bristles on this are just stiff enough that it creates this kind of waterfall look um, without having too much paint in it. Our scruffies just don't quite have the shape that we need for this. So I found the best result with these mops. Okay. So picking up the white and a little bit of the purple, I don't want to go completely white yet. And then tapping over 
and then coming off into this fringe area here on the side. You're just lightly tapping with the white and the purple. So picking up the perfect purple and the white blend on the brush and come right lightly over that foliage. And what's going to happen is it's not going to completely cover it. So you're still going to see some of that green through there. Okay. So I kind of work this area pretty good. I want to let that dry a little bit before we add some highlight. So let's come back through um, to the right side. Once you get the brush, the shape that's giving you the best results, it's best to just keep loading it and using it in that same method. So don't go back and flatten it. See how it's creating this really pretty kind of falling over flowered look here. I'm going to come over here just so you can see it without it being on the background. So that's the look right there with little bits falling down. It's giving me the best look for this wisteria. So if you have these mop brushes and you're not using them, why not? Why not give this tree a try? Why not use it to put on beautiful backgrounds? with washes of floating medium or water. And with that blue poppy set that we're doing at the end of January, we'll be using this mop to do the beautiful washed backgrounds. And we'll be using it to do um, the white and gray flowers, getting pretty highlights washed over, okay? So you're going to get a chance to use these mops if you haven't yet. And I encourage you to sign up for those classes so that you get a chance to use those brushes and understand how they work and not be afraid of them. All right, so see how I'm just tapping in this foliage over this area. Now I'm going to pick up a little stronger purple. You want to angle it to the right on the right side and to the left on the left side. Okay. All right. So I've come through this area here with that lighter shade. You can still see the dark underneath. Let me get some more white with that load. Now we're going to add our second layer here, working on these sides. And then our third will be at the top. So white with the perfect purple. If you don't have these mop brushes, you need to get them. All right. People, a lot of people have asked me, you know, do I really need these? No, you don't need them, but boy, you sure would like them. If you had them, you'd use them. Um, I use them a lot more than I thought I would now that we better understand how to use them. All right. Before I always thought mops were for, um, blending color and used dry. And then our friend Paula McCoy taught us how to use them correctly. They're not used dry. They're used wet, either with water or medium. And you can mop in um, or blend in shades using this mop brush. All right. So see how I'm getting these softer tones of this purple coming through here. And I'm still leaving areas where the the green background is showing. Okay, now I'm going to come in and do this third top tier here. You have to move it around, move the brush around so it's not sitting in one area and you're not getting mud. Okay, and I want to leave some of that dark in there, but I'm going to come and connect this area down to here. And then let's add a little more light there. Now I'm just picking up white. And we're going to layer that in to create some lighter areas in the middle where you would be looking at the light hitting it. Okay. See how that's creating that soft, pretty look? And I'm not pulling the brush down. It's just the angle that I'm pouncing it that's helping me get this. It's on the corner with a vertical orientation of 
the um, chisel edge, okay? And I'm tapping. All right, now I want to stop at this point and add some branches back in. And then we will finish off with some softer touches. So I'm going to get my two script liner. Let's come back out a little bit and I'm going to get some water with that. And I'm going to come over here and get a blend of the asphaltum and licorice. More water. And I'm making an inky puddle. I don't want it too inky because I don't want it to be runny. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to come in and add parts of branches supporting these flowers. And remember the orientation or the, um, yeah, the, the growth habit of this is like an umbrella. So they kind of come down and then up. All right. And let's come up from the middle now. Get a, a little bit stronger push to give a wider branch. They just kind of pop out of the flowers here. So just on the tip of that brush, and if you have to turn it, just turn it. It's best if you can pull them up to you. Lay them down, stand them up. Pull little bits out from here and there. All right, and then let's come over here. We're going to bring this down and then back up. From here down. So like you're seeing the underside of the branch there. Don't worry, I know it looks funny because it's sitting on top of all this color. We're going to come pounce a little more at the very end to tuck some of those back. All right, but see how I bring that down and then up to support all those flowers growing there. All right, now I'm going to add a branch right from here. So we're going to push that down and then give it a bit of a wiggle as you come up into this section right here. So, whoops, bring that down and then up. See that? And we'll add a few coming up the middle here. And here we're going to come under and then back up like we did on the other side. Little bits out in the outside edges. Okay. There we go. All right. So I think that's pretty good adding all these individual um, strokes in here. And then I want to come back in. Let me get my, I've got a 10 flat here. I can come in with a little bit of medium and a little bit of yellow ochre and asphaltum. And I'm going to add some highlights on these trunks. Let me side load a little bit of the licorice. And let's come down here. Whoops, a little bit more of the asphaltum. We want to plant this trunk in the ground. Side stroke some of that dark. Once you've got your tree and the shape that you want, then you can start adding whatever little details to what's still showing, right? It's no point in doing all that extra detail work on the stuff up top if no one's ever going to see it, okay? So we're going to bring this out here like this, and then in the end, I'm going to show you how we add some more color down there. All right, so let's finish up this pretty top to our tree. I'm going to come back with my mop and I'm just tapping into a little bit of white. So we're kind of using this like a scruffy, but not quite the same. Okay. So actually, let me wipe this off. I want to get a little bit of medium in the brush and then come get some of that white. All right. Now, if this is too heavy, then I might tap it off on paper towel, but that's actually working out really good. So I'm coming in here 
and there and adding just little bits of white trailing over see I'm barely touching it right barely touching it There we go. Just come right across some of those branches, adding a few little highlights. Now, if you felt like you lost some of your darker areas, you could, using the same method, bring some of those back in as well. Just wipe off the brush. You can tap into some of the perfect purple and you could come back in here and add some of those dark areas back in. there. So if you got a little too heavy handed with the white and then just blend that in so that it looks like it's part of it. Okay so now what we want to do that's our tree. Now we want to kind of tie things together down below. I'm going to clean this brush. Now the question was asked how do we clean this? You're just going to rake it in your brush basin. Let me move these out of the way right? One way. They're natural hairs, so you don't want to scrub them back and forth, but you can rake them in one direction. And then just lay them out flat on the paper towel. You can pinch them to get the water out if you need to. I'm going to now proceed to use this wet anyway, so I'm going to load some medium, and we're going to get just a little bit of this asphaltum and get a thin kind of watercolory look. Just grab just a little bit of that yellow ochre there. All right, and this is another way we like to do this um, wash sort of thing with these brushes. I'm just on the very tip. You can apply pressure to get wider. And let me get a little bit darker brown right in here. A tiny, tiny bit of that black. There we go. Okay, a little bit more right here. That's it. All right, and then back in here a little bit. Now, I want to wipe off that brush on my paper towel. I'm going to come and get some more medium and a little bit of this perfect purple on this brush. And we're just going to sputter some purple like the flowers have fallen petals have fallen. That's a lot right there. Let me wipe that off. Um, and drop little bits of purple down below. So you go out to a point out here, out to a point out there, and then you can come forward a little bit like that. Okay. So that's our tree, guys. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll try to put that into practice with your mops adding just a little bit of dark purple back in there. Okay, so there you go. A pretty flowering wisteria tree with some simple strokes from a filbert brush and a mop brush.